Hello everybody, today I'm going to be breaking down the best Streamlabs settings if you have a low-end PC. This is going to work if you have bad internet as well, so stay tuned, we're going to go over all the settings. I'll leave a link in the description to download Streamlabs desktop for free so you can follow along. If you haven't done your initial setup of Streamlabs, I'll leave a link to my last video of going through all of the entire setup below. But once you've logged into your platform or whatever and you're ready to actually do your settings, we're just gonna go down to settings, of course, and we're gonna start here with the output tab. Now, mine are on the settings from that video, so we're just gonna be changing them. Uh, first thing you wanna do is make sure your output mode is on advanced. We're gonna have access to a couple more settings here that we might wanna use. Um, so first things first is the encoder. Now, this is gonna be very important, especially on a low-end PC. It depends how low-end your PC is and genuinely just what parts you have. So if you do not have a graphics card, really, or at least anything newer, uh, you know, if you just don't have a graphics card, uh, that's like good at all, you're probably going to want to need to use software encoding, which is X264. Now this is going to be using your CPU and it can be rough when you're trying to stream games that need to utilize that CPU as well, especially on a low end PC. So if you can keep from it, do not use software X2, X264 encoding. Uh, you really need a graphics card if you want to live stream. Ideally you want to be using NVENC new or even NVENC if you have an older NVIDIA card, but ideally you want an NVIDIA card even if it's a lower end one, as long as it has NVENC, even if it's not NVENC new, even the older NVENC is still gonna be better uh, performance wise than software X264 for most people. And I believe the oldest NVIDIA card to get NVENC new, which you can pick up for I believe around 150 or $200, which I'll leave a link to in the description, but I believe it's like the 1650 Super or maybe the 1650, 1660, somewhere around there, um, I know is when NVENC new started. So pick up one of those cards if you have to make any upgrades to your system, or maybe you already have that or something a little better. So if you have that, then you should be good to go for the encoder, because that's what's gonna be most ideal. Even on a lower end PC, you really wanna be using an NVENC hardware encoder, because software encoding is gonna run into more issues whenever you're trying to game, and you're gonna have bad FPS and all kinds of issues. So once you've got your encoder selected, we're gonna move on to the rate control and bit rate. Now the rate control, you definitely just want this on CBR, which stands for constant bit rate. This is pretty standard when you are live streaming. Now when it comes to the bit rate, we're currently at 6,000, which is like the recommended for about 1080p. Now the bit rate is going to pretty heavily depend on what your internet speed is. You need at least 10 megabits upload to do a 6,000 bit rate, which is a good bit. If you have really bad internet, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say the lowest bit rate you're probably going to want to stream with the settings I'm going to show you today is around 2,000 to 2,500. I'm just going to put 2,500. Um, this is not going to be great quality, but this is about low-end PC, just getting a stream up, something that's viewable, even though it's not high quality. So 2,500 is what I'm going to recommend here. And to do this, your upload speed really should probably be at least, at, at bare minimum, a four or five upload, but really a five upload or higher. Uh, megabit if you don't have a five megabit or higher upload speed then it's going to be really hard to stream in a viewable quality because anything under 2000 bit rate especially you're going to be having pretty bad quality i mean this is already uh, a compromise but i'm going to just do the best i can to give you true low-end settings now if you have good internet and it's just your low-end pc but your upload speed is 10 20 you know 30 or higher megabits then feel free to just leave this bit rate uh you know at 5000 6000 uh, you could even do 4,500, it's not bad. Uh, but if your internet's good, then your bit rate shouldn't matter a ton. But again, it's gonna depend ultimately on your actual system and how bad or decent it may be. But for today's example, we're gonna be going like worst case scenario for the most part. Uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and put it at 2,500. For the keyframe interval, you can leave this on zero, it'll automatically set it. Now when it comes to the next one, which is the preset, which you have P1 through P7, here, we're probably gonna be wanna be using P5. This is gonna be slow and good quality. This should be a good compromise between quality and performance. Now, if you do have issues or you wanna bump it down more, you could go down to P4. I wouldn't recommend anything below P4 if you can keep from it, but P4 or P5 should be the sweet spot for a lower end PC while still trying to get some decent quality. When it comes to the tuning section, you just wanna leave this on high quality. The low latency and ultra low latency are just gonna be more difficult to run. Multi-pass mode, you're probably just going to leave this on single pass as the two pass ones can use up more GPU if you even have a dedicated graphics card. Uh, so just put that on single pass. It should be fine. That shouldn't really hurt your quality too much. 
For the profile, you're gonna to wanna to change this from high to main. This is gonna give you a little bit better performance in this department. When it comes to look ahead and psychovisual tuning, make sure your look ahead is off because that's definitely gonna require more resources from your computer. Psychovisual tuning, leave on if you can. If you do have you know, performance issues, it's something you could try turning off although it may hurt the quality of your stream. I'm not sure exactly how much, but I'm gonna recommend you generally try to leave that on if you can. And then the rest of these settings, GPU on zero and then max B frames at two should be just fine. Now we're finished with the output section. We're gonna go over to the video section. This is a very important section, especially for low end PCs. Um, a lot of people are gonna be able to solve their streaming problems just by using this video section. Uh, once you have some decent output settings so the base canvas resolution is always going to be the size of your monitor so in this case a 1080p monitor pretty standard now the output scaled resolution is where it starts to get interesting you're going to want to ideally ideally be streaming at 720p these days minimum if you can if, if you at all can now if you can't do 720p i'm going to recommend you do 852 by 480. This is gonna be 480p, which is pretty bad, but if you're truly on a low-end PC and you just wanna stream so bad, you know, like I used to back before I had a good computer and things like that, then 480p is probably the lowest I would personally say is viewable if someone really wants to watch. It's not good at all, don't get me wrong, but that's gonna be, if, if you're really struggling, that's the resolution I'm gonna recommend. But if you can at all do 720, just do 720, please. Um, it's actually going to be, you know, decent quality, a lot better than 480p if you can, uh, and it shouldn't be too hard to run as long as you have a, you know, halfway decent low end PC. Uh, now when it comes to the downscale filter, you're probably just going to leave this on bilinear should run a little bit faster performance wise, but it's not going to make a huge difference. So if you want to try to link those for a little bit sharper image, uh, at a little bit more, per, uh, cost of performance, and you could try that as well. Now, when it comes to the frames per second, this is actually a pretty big deal. Now, most games are gonna be streamed at 60 FPS because they're gonna look smoother, especially you know these high frame rate games, whether you're playing Call of Duty or Warzone or Apex Legends or whatever it is, 60 is gonna look better. But when you're on a low end PC, cutting this in half to 30 is gonna really help cut down on the amount of encoding uh, that your computer has to do. It's gonna really just cut it down by half, pretty much going from 60 to 30 uh, per second. So. That's gonna really give you the best uh, optimization for performance if you have a low-end PC. A couple bonus tips I'll throw in is if you go to your advanced tab, you can set your process priority to above normal. This will just make sure Streamlabs is able to utilize your CPU uh, resources when it needs it. And then you can also scroll down and I recommend going under the network section and turning on dynamically change bitrate when dropping frames and enable new networking code. You can leave low latency mode off though, but I personally think these two uh, settings turned on will help your network performance if you have any network issues it will also of course the first one will prevent dropping frames as it says uh, by lowering your stream quality when it does drop frames but these are optional you don't have to do these but uh, in regards to network i would recommend giving them a try especially if you're, if you're running into issues with dropped frames and things like that but that's it for this video thanks for watching as always i'll see you guys next time